Let's look at what would be helpful to know for best fit lines and correlations for the SAT math section. So this says use the graph below for question number one and question number two. We've got a graph here. Now one thing you want to do on the SAT when you have a graph is always look at the scale. Sometimes they do some tricky things with the scale here. The x-axis is mean study time in hours. Okay, so I don't know, someone's studying something for some number of hours, and it goes up by 0.5. It's not 1, 2, 3. It's 0.5, 1, 1 1.5. The y-axis is mean test score. Oh, I see. So it's, it's saying what would be the average test score based on the average number of hours studied. Well, let's see here. Ooh, one thing I noticed, it skips some numbers. See right there? There's that little squiggly. So it's, it's not going from zero. It's going from 60, 65, 70. Ah, this is going up by five. So just always check that because they might ask something about a slope. And it wouldn't necessarily be rise over run if you're counting one and one each way, right? This is going to be up five over 0.5 on this graph. Okay. With that said, let's go on to question number one and see what it asks for here. Assume the best fit line goes through the point 494. This means that if a student studies for four hours, they will definitely get a score of 94. Well, this is a line of best fit, and it's the best estimate for the points that you get on this graph. So kind of on average, it's the, the closest line to all these points on average. All right? It's just an estimate. It doesn't mean you'll definitely get that. So if someone studies for four hours right here, if I go up, yeah, that's going to be at a height of basically 94. But remember, that's just an estimate. It's not true that they will definitely get a score of 94, so I'll say false on that. Number two, the graph above shows what type of association. So an association, okay, they've got strong and positive, weak and positive, strong and negative, weak and negative. A strong association means that the points are very close to the line of best fit. Well, this one, they're not very close. They're kind of scattered all about. So this would be a weak association. And... We also have, so let's see, so weak, we have weak and positive, or, oops, sorry, this one here, weak and negative. So a weak association, <clears throat> and is it positive or negative? Well, that just depends on the direction of the line. If it goes up, in other words, if it's a positive slope, it's going to be a positive association. So this, this one is going to be weak because they're spread apart, not very close to the line, and positive because the slope goes up. Okay, next it says use the graph below for question number three and question number four. Again, I'm going to check the scale first. Two, four, six. Okay, this is going up by twos. Two, four, six. This is also going up by twos here. Let's see. We get This is kind of small to see, but it says the equation for the line is y equals negative 1.1x plus 14.0. What is the estimated y value when x equals 6.5 on this line? So that means... I can just plug in 6.5 for x. I'm going to use my calculator right now. Negative 1.5 times 6.5. Sorry, negative 1.1 times 6.5 plus 14 gives me an output of 6.85. So if I plug in 6.5 for x, that's right about here. And I go straight up. I should be at a height of about 6.85 right there. The graph shows what type of association. Well, on this one, the dots are all pretty close to that line, so that's going to be a strong association. And it's a negative slope, so it'll be strong and negative right there. Okay, number five. The graph above is best modeled by what type of function? So you want to know what a linear function looks like. That'll just be a line. It might have a positive slope. It might have a negative slope. That's definitely not a line. Quadratics will look like this, this kind of U shape. It'll go that way, or maybe it'll go that way. It doesn't look like that because it's flat on one side and it goes up on the other side. So it doesn't it look it doesn't look like it comes back up on this side. Exponent exponential functions will look like this. They'll be flat on one side and become more and more vertical on the other side. So exponential functions could look like this. They could look like that. They could look like this, where it's it's steeper on, on the left side, but gets flat as you go to the right. Or they could look like this. So these are kind of the, the four different types of exponential 
function shapes that you might see. So this one is definitely exponential. Okay, what makes it exponential? Well, it might be of the form y equals a times b to the power of x. When your input variable is in the place of an exponent, that's an exponential function. So let's say y equals 2 times 3 to the power of x. As x increases, I'm going to multiply by 3 one more time every time x goes up by 1. So for example, if, if x is 1, that would be 2 times 3 to the power of 1. If x is 2, it's 2 times 3 to the power of 2. So 2 times 3 times 3. If x is 3, it's 2 times 3 to the power of 3. So every time that means that my, as I go 1 to the right, my output will triple because I'm multiplying by 3. And that's why as we go over by one more, it gets steeper and steeper because I'm, you know, for example, in this case, I'd triple it. Every time I go up one, 1 to the right, I go up by 3 times as much. So it gets very steep on one side of an exponential uh, function. Okay, let's look at number six. The graph above is best modeled by what type of function? Well, that's that quadratic uh, parabola shape, so that's going to be a quadratic. A line of best fit is a function that gives an estimate of an output for a given input. So is that true or false? So let's look at this again. A line of best fit is a function that gives an estimate of an output for a given input. Yeah, we said we said that before that we're just estimating what we get as the output based on what the input is. Okay, so I'll say that one's true. Number eight, from the values below, the most reasonable estimate for the slope of the best fit line shown above is. Again, I'm gonna check the scale. So let's see, ooh, it starts at 10 suddenly. 10, 12, 14, 16, okay, this is going up by two. Vertically, it goes up by 100, okay? They're asking for the an estimate for the slope. Well, slope is rise over run. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to pick two points that are far apart, because the farther apart they are, um, even though there's a little bit of an error in maybe the height or my horizontal value, the x value, um, just based on what I see, the error will be not as big proportionately to you know the values that I have. So if I'm off by 10, for example, by being very close here, that, that 10 in height might be big compared to dividing you know, it's the change in y over change in x. Well, my slope might be way off if I'm off by a height of 10, if I go over just by one. But if I go over by, you know, let's say 15 or something like that, then if I'm off by 10, with on the vertical amount, then that's not going to make such a big difference for what that slope is. Okay, so I'm going to take a point, maybe let's say right around here, and let's just go right around here. So let's see. This is about a height of 180 when I have 12, 4, x. So that's going to be 12, 180. And my other point here, I'm putting in 24. I get a height of about 500. It's about 580. Okay, so 24, 580, and my change in height, I go from 180 up to 580. That's going to be, I go up about 400, and my change in my x value, 12 to 24, is I'm going over by 12. So I can use my calculator for this. Let's do 400 divided by 12. I get 33.3 repeating, so um, that's going to be 33.3. It said, what is the most reasonable estimate for the slope of this line of best fit here? Well, 30 is the closest. And if I hadn't checked the scale carefully, I might say, let's see, it looks like, hey, I go up, I go up one, two, and I go over about one, two, three. I might pick two thirds by accident, right? So that's why you always want to check the scale. So that is it for the line of best fit and some concepts that go along with that that would be helpful to know for the SAT.